Hey folks, it's Ardwolf. Welcome. This is another unboxing video brought to you courtesy of Buckeye Game Fest in Columbus, Ohio, which has just ended. So let's do another unboxing of a small thing that I got for an excellent price. This game, Marching Through Georgia. This is volume 8 in the Civil War campaign series from Clash of Arms. Now, this is a game system that is... The first question that some people are going to ask is, can you solo it? The answer is no. This game is hopeless for solo play because there's tons and tons and tons of hidden stuff in it. Um, I do have <coughs> an earlier game um, in the series on the Vicksburg campaign. I haven't played it yet, um, but I have looked through it and it looks super interesting. So we're going to unbox Marching Through Georgia, which is obviously Sherman's campaign, uh, to take Atlanta. I uh, have never, not really for any particularly good reason, uh, have never really been big on Clash of Arms games. I, I, they do some stuff that I'm in, definitely interested in. Um, it's just kind of been one of those things where I haven't had that much opportunity to acquire or play stuff from Clash of Arms. And the stuff from Clash of Arms that gets played around here is either Close Action, their naval combat game, which I have played and which is very good, and which I'm in the market for a copy, and Labatt. And I am, again, as you may have heard me say, reluctant to get into the morass that is Labatt. Um, so, what do we got here in Marching Through Georgia? Obviously, this is an interesting campaign to me. Um, it is interesting enough that I am willing and even happy to have two games on the subject. Um, as you may have seen previously, I also have Atlanta is Ours from... A multi-man publishing part of the Great Campaigns of the American Civil War series, which I feel is the definitive operational treatment of the U.S. Civil War. Um, this is a quite different type of game. It is operational, um, but it's area-based. Rick Barber maps, a very nice map. Um, you have a rule book, which is what feels like 16 pages. Feels like there's no page numbers on the thing. Okay, that's irritating. Um, well, we're going to go with roughly 16 pages, because that's about what it feels like. Uh, this is the exclusive rules, scenarios, and historical commentary. So, let's see here. We have got uh, what looks like four pages of then exclusive rules. Um, and then we have the standard rules, which also doesn't have page numbers. Um, and this looks like about 16 pages, too. If I had to guess, this feels just a hair thicker than this. Um, sequence play on the back. Um, like I said, a lot of hidden movement here. So you can see the counters. There's one counter sheet on very thick stock. They're very thick brown core stock. Um, <clears throat> and you've just got flags on the front sides. The actual units are on the back sides. So there's two maps here. Holy cow. Okay. And they're not the same map. They didn't give me two of the same map. It looks like this goes off the top of the other one. That's actually makes perfect sense thinking about it. Um... I don't know as much as I would like about this campaign, um, but my avenue for learning that thing is motivated in large part by the games I have and enjoy in on those subjects, right? So I was really pretty uninterested in U.S. Civil War and had, in fact, never played a Civil War war game until I played, somebody talked me into playing... Um, Mark Herman's For the People, which is terrific. And now I have a crap load of Civil War games. Thanks, Mark, and the person that introduced me to it. So, uh, the newsletter of Civil War Gaming is another thing. I'd love to just mail this in. Wilmington, North Carolina. That is interesting. I'm guessing that's a defunct publication, but who knows. Um, here's a order of battle. Double-sided. So you'd obviously want, there's only one of each of these. You'd obviously want to photocopy these. Or scan them. What are all the extra pieces for? Uh, okay, there was a newsletter of Clash of Arms. So, and of course, Clash of Arms is still still going strong. They're still doing um, Labatt games. They still have a, a number of, I think, Kevin Zucker things, um, uh, Napoleonic titles available. And uh, they still have a going World War II series in the Struggle for Europe series, which looks real interesting. Now, there is a battle display here um, where you fight out the actual battles. Um, also, Rick Barber map, and, and 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 Rick Barber is extremely talented. Let me put it that way. Uh, and here we have a turn record track and victory point track. Um, so not tons and tons of components here, right? We have a what? A, what do I take to be a one-inch box? Um, you could handily 
This is the kind of game I would put in baggies, frankly. Um, I, I'm not big on baggies as, as counter storage, but I would do it for this because there's, there's not that many counters, right? And you can certainly justify putting all the Union in one bag and all the Confederate in another bag. Um, and it looks like there's blanks, too, which is fine. Um, and I'm super, very thick stock. I don't want to say super thick stock. I've seen thicker, but <clears throat> not... Uh, Battle Lines counters were thicker, at least in some games, and um, DVG's current counters are at least sometimes, again, thicker. So, Marching Through Georgia. Now, again, this is Volume 8 in the series, and I don't have um, uh, the Siege of Vicksburg game at hand, or I would, I would be tempted to compare the two. But uh, it's a very interesting series. Judd Vance from uh, the Hamtag team... Um, and very active on board game geek recommended this series very strongly. So on the, on the strength of those recommendations, I picked, um, I've now got two of them and I know there's a Gettysburg game out there too. And I'm a little bit tempted. I'm less tempted by that, honestly, because I have several games on Gettysburg already. I only have one game on this, um, uh, now two, but, uh, it's a very interesting looking series. Um, again, it's all blind, um, lots of hidden movement, not at all soloable, but also not amazingly time consuming to play either. So you could easily drop this on a table and play it, uh, in a, a day or a half a day at a convention. So super interesting looking series. Hopefully we'll get this to the table sometime soon. I did have some local folks say, Ooh, that looks neat and, and expressed interest. So let's see how that goes. So, again, check out uh, the links to Buckeye Game Fest and Enterprise Games in the video description. Um, I look forward to hopefully seeing some of you at Buckeye Game Fest 2020. Um, check out uh, the dates for the, the next event uh, there. So, uh, thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.